That was Wisconsin U.S. Representative Mike Gallagher in a tweet during the siege on the U.S. Capitol on Wednesday. He went on to vote to certify the Electoral College votes of states as he had supported before the violent rioting. Our U.S. Senators Tammy Baldwin and Ron Johnson also voted to certify, though Johnson was fully behind voting to reject until the Capitol was overrun. Of Wisconsin's other members of Congress, only newly elected Scott Fitzgerald and 7th District U.S. Representative Tom Tiffany voted to reject electoral votes. Those votes have the state's largest newspaper calling for them and Senator Johnson to be immediately expelled from their seats or to resign as members of what's been dubbed the Sedition Caucus. Tough words for actions in a failed attempt to overturn results of the election. In a moment, we will be joined by Republican U.S. Representative Glenn Grothman. Joining us now is Democrat Mark Pocan, U.S. Representative from Madison. And thank you very much for being here. I'm glad to be here, Frederica. Well, at this point, you are among those calling to impeach President Trump, but why with only 12 days left in his term? Uh, because with uh, 14 days left in his term, we had a, a attempted coup on the U.S. Capitol, and who knows uh, what could happen in the remaining days. I mean, you know, Donald Trump is not normal um, by any stretch of the definition, and uh, no previous Democrat or Republican has brought uh, so many of his followers into Washington, D.C. when you're there to certify the electors, uh, ask them to march onto the Capitol, egg them on uh, for their actions. And, you know, we don't know what else he could do in the remaining two weeks. Uh, uh, today, Nancy Pelosi uh, had to reach out uh, to the head of the Joint Chiefs and worry about access to the nuclear codes uh, in case Donald Trump would do something. So, you know, it, it's the Wall Street Journal. It's the Association of Manufacturers, neither of which is a liberal organization. Uh, it's Republicans and Democrats who are all calling for this right now because we have real concern for our country. Some Republicans say such moves just enhance divisions at a time when President-elect Biden is calling for unity. We absolutely should have unity, but you can't have unity if you've got someone who could do a dangerous action. And, uh, you know, the last time that there was a, a storming of the U.S. Capitol was in the War of 1812 by the British. So uh, since this is something that Donald Trump did that hasn't happened in several hundred years uh, after following a pandemic that we haven't had for a couple uh, for 100 years anyway, uh, you know, we're starting to notice a pattern here. This president has, has acted in unprecedented ways and they have been an unprecedented attacks on this country. Let's face it. Donald Trump doesn't care about the country. He cares about Donald Trump and his family and his family's business. And I think, you know, people really woke up this week to that. But all the more, we've got to protect our democracy and the integrity of the country. And you do that by either, one, having the cabinet do what they should do, is invoke the 25th Amendment, uh, or two, if they won't, we have to do impeachment. What's your response to Capitol Police losing control and allowing the building to be breached in that way? Yeah, I, it was sad. I mean, I, I, the feeling I still have is sadness uh, from what happened the other day. You know, one, I think there was some ill preparedness. They weren't ready for what happened and they should have been better prepared. But, you know, we lost uh, one of the officers' uh, lives uh, during this. And, uh, you know, by the end of the day, they had 1,800 people to make sure that we could get the rest of the business done. And I'm glad we went back immediately into session and got the business done that we had to. But it never should have gotten that far. We never should have had to worry about something like that. Donald Trump invited those people to come that day, and he went to a rally, and he and his family and his lawyer egged uh, them on uh, for their actions. So, you know, uh, no one can act like Donald Trump is innocent on this. And unfortunately, uh, as you saw from the editorial of the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel and other places, you know, they're, they're now referred to people as the Sedition Caucus who voted to overturn election returns. None of this is normal, right? So I'm just hoping that in a, a couple weeks, we can get back to a place where uh, business is done the way it traditionally has been done when Joe Biden is president. But in the next two weeks, I'm still very concerned for what could happen. I, I just wanted to point uh, to this. How, how different do you think this would have been for the protesters had they been Black Lives Matter demonstrators? Uh, no question. Uh, there were only 55 arrests. During the Brett Kavanaugh hearings, there were over 200 arrests, uh, right? I mean, so this was a very... Uh, 
a poorly executed effort and already my committee, the appropriations committee, uh, one of the subcommittees that has oversight over the Capitol Police is having a hearing. Um, there's probably gonna be more reviews and reports done. The chief of the Capitol Police is resigning as are the sergeant at arms. Uh, this clearly um, was done poorly. And you know, to say you're gonna go and arrest people after the fact, arrest that day would have helped quite a bit. Do you have real concerns uh, for the next days in terms of national security with Donald Trump still the sitting president? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Donald Trump is so unpredictable. He's such a narcissist. Um, who knows what else he could do? Um, and that's what I think our real worries are. You know, he's already uh, been talking about being tougher in Iran. We don't need to start a war in the last couple of weeks of anyone's presidency when you've got someone new coming in on January 20th. So that's why I think we're so concerned and why we think not only does he have to be punished for what he did, which was an assault on, on our democracy on Wednesday, uh, but we have to make sure that he doesn't do any more damage to this country. Uh, meanwhile, nearly lost in all of this, Democrats just won control of the Senate. Uh, what will Democrats do with this leadership? So it's a tight margin. It's a 50-50 Senate. And the tie-breaking vote is going to be uh, Kamala Harris, the vice president-elect. Uh, and our House margin is a relatively small margin. So it's not like you're going to see uh, a lot of uh, action happen on things that I might like to see as someone who's more of a progressive Democrat. Um, but uh, it does mean that hopefully we can get some of the appointments through that we need to. We can get some basic bills that uh, need to fix some of the damage that was done by the Trump presidency uh, through Congress but it's not exactly a huge margin in either house. All right, U.S. Representative Mark Polkan, thanks very much and thanks for joining us. Absolutely, thank you.